So recently, a lot of people have been asking me about color correcting. Do I color correct in DaVinci? Do I color correct in Premiere? How do I get the skin tones to be so great? They're not perfect to me by any means. I am still learning how to color to this day. I am no colorist, but I have been trying to learn to perfect my skin tones. I've been trying to learn how to get better at color correcting and coloring in general. As an editor, that's just something you kind of have to know at least the basics of. But today I wanted to just give you all a glimpse of my workflow and how I color correct my YouTube videos as well as some client work and give you all my secret favorite Rec 709 LUT that I use. So let's jump into Premiere. Now we are in Premiere and we're in the Infects workspace. As you can see, I have my Lumetri color panel up. We have the Lumetri scopes ready to go. And I'm going to work off of two clips. One, of course, I want to show you all how I color my YouTube videos, the talking hair ones that you all see. And then two, I want to show you all how I color a client video because they're pretty much the same workflows and because I shoot with the same camera majority of the time which is a black magic I do like it because I'm able to use the same workflow which makes it so much more efficient when editing especially if you're in a time crunch with the client and so being able to use the same camera sometimes on different projects is a bonus because you already know how you're gonna color because you already have a foundation so first we're gonna get into how I edit my YouTube videos. So we're just gonna start. And in order to make sure that I am only not needing to work with audio. So this is what we have for the YouTube video. This is what we have for the client video. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is I put my millimetry scopes up and then I have this flat profile. So I like to go into the basic correction and I like to lay my foundational Rec 709. LUT. So there's a lot of Rec 709 LUTs out there. Many people use different Rec 709 LUTs. There's no right or wrong way to coloring. And that's what I always want to tell people because people think that there's just this certain way. Now there's things that you need to learn or what makes a good color and what makes a bad, but there's no right or wrong. It's subjective of how you want to color it. So I get my LUTs from Mateo and hopefully I'm saying his name right but he is a filmmaker and YouTuber and he has the buttery LUTs, which I am in love with. Ever since I found him, because he had a black magic and when I bought the black magic, his videos were so great. I love the softness. I love the vibrancies that I get from his LUTs. Um, I've tried other Rec 709 LUTs and this is the best one for me. As you can see, if you go to his website, it does give you every camera. So whatever camera you have, he, you can buy the LUTs from him and it's gonna work for your camera. And I love it. I have the EOS R. I have the Black Magic, of course, because you know I have an R6, and I have the Canon C200 because I always use the C200 for work. So I've pretty much used various ones that he has, and I freaking again, I love them. So if you're interested in this LUT after you see how I color, definitely go tell him that I sent you on on his YouTube, uh, just so he can know that I support him. But yes, buttery LUTs are freaking amazing. So outside of that. That's what we're gonna be using for our foundational Rec 709 LUT. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to Input LUT, go to Browse, and I have a full folder in my documents called LUTs. These are all my creative LUTs or LUTs that I've purchased that aren't necessarily in Premiere, and I like to keep them in my documents because a lot of times if Premiere you know, upgrades to the newest Premiere, I always lose all the LUTs that is in that Premiere folder. So I have it on my actual computer called Documents, and I go to Black Magic. As you can see, I purchased it. I like to use Gen 4. I've tried Gen 5, and it's just a little bit too much for me. So I like to use Gen 4. Again, it's subjective. And as you can see, it already comes with a couple different options. I just use the standard one that he has um, without the, the the boost of contrast or without the, you know, taking away the contrast. So I hit open. So as you can see, um, it brightened up the colors and we have this boost in saturation a little bit as you can see on the hats and things like that so we already have our whites peaking a little they're pretty high we have some room for shadow um, and so that's what we're gonna play with first so for my exposure I like to just kind of like drop that down um, and for me I like to do like a negative 0.5 and another reason why I try not to go too too low sometimes I do a negative one sometimes I do a negative 0.5 
But just the thing to note is that when I export out, we all know Premiere has coloring issues when it exports and sometimes it has issues with color consistency. And so I'll get into that later, but this is the reason why I think about it because if I go too low on my exposure, that 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 LUT that I'm gonna use when I export is gonna even drop it down. So I don't wanna go too low when I'm coloring. So I like to keep it at a negative 0.5, which is in between, it's around the 80 RE, which is fine, right? I can drop it even lower later in the post. So the next thing I do is I like to go to my contrast. I want it to be a little contrasted, so I'll go about 25. Um, and then I've done this, so I pretty much know my numbers now. But my highlights, I like to keep around like a negative 17 or negative 20. Same with my whites, because that is, you know, what was a little higher. So my whites, I like to go to like a negative 20. So again, as you can see, this is the before and after that we're working with. And it's already, you know, doing a little something. And this is bothering me. So let me just go ahead and align this clip. Okay, so now we're going to go and i'm going to play with a little bit of shadows just to kind of bring it down just a tad so maybe we're going to do like a negative 15. all right and then i would like to bring my saturation up but we'll wait because the next thing that i like to do is i'll go into my color wheels and i'll bring my highlights down and the reason why is because I've just noticed that once I add this creative LUT that I'm going to show you guys, it's going to really affect the highlights. And so I like to just bring those down just because I already know that that LUT is going to affect it. So now when I go to creative LUT and when I think about creative LUT in Rec 709, I think about the Rec 709 being the basic foundation to get you back to having a foundational color you know system and after adding that rec 709 LUT the creative LUT is just more of the dynamic coloring that you can do to really punch in and bring your colors to where you want them to go so it's layers you add the rec 709 and then you go into your creative look so for me I usually use the same creative LUT majority of the time unless it unless the project calls for something different but 95% of the time this works perfect for skin tones this light just gives me the vibrancy that I love and so again a lot of people talk about how y'all using LUTs and they make it seem like it's a bad thing but for me as an editor it's about workflow and efficiency so if I can find a LUT that allows me to get the intended results why not use that right like why waste my time doing anything else i'm not trying to be this colorist you know unless i'm gonna get paid to be a colorist but sometimes if i have clients and they just want me to you know color something really quick this is what you do and it's okay don't let nobody ever talk you down like you can't use LUTs but outside of that we're gonna go into creative and I like to use a free LUT that I got online from a company called LUTify me and I'll have all the links below but I go and I use um, I think it's Hue Landite uh, LUT and it has a log in a Rec 709 so I'll click on that and as you can see it punched it all the way up which is why I brought those highlights down now when I add when I color this you'll see that this creative look can pretty much work with anything that's just my preferred choice but i have so many luts you know within this creative folder that i can use any one that i might want to use right so essentially it's just really up to you but the biggest thing is making sure that you're not just throwing the lut on there and saying okay i'm done what you want to do is you want to play around and make sure it blends in with your footage so for me if i want to do 30 30 days of night I like to put all of my creative LUTs on about 50 or 25, depending on how strong they are. So no matter what LUT that I decided to use, even if you use the LUT that comes into uh, Premiere, then you could. But I personally like to use that LUT that I was just telling you about. So let's see. Boom. So if you remember how my YouTube videos look, they all kind of look like this. So we're already off to a good start. Um, we're at about 50 for the intensity. This is what it was when it was at 100, which is too much, right? So we're at about 50. We can bring it down to 25 if we want, or we can keep it at a 50. So the intensity is at 50, and then I want to add just a little bit more saturation. So I'm going to put it at like a 125. Now, the goal is to really affect the skin tones. That's what we want. So we're gonna that's going to change the dynamic overall of this whole, you know, coloring. So... As you can see, you know, the highlights were brought down. If we want, we can bring our mid tones down a little bit more. Our, uh, it looks like the, the, our skin tones is going to be pretty much good. But a way I like to test skin tones is I'll go into opacity, go into the ellipse mask tool, 
create a little circle around my skin. I try to go into like where my cheeks are, right? Create a small little circle, just so it's showing my skin tone. And then I like to go into, come on, come on. Lemetri scopes, just to kind of see what my um, what my skin tone is looking like. So just make sure you get it to where it's only showing the skin. So as you can see, we're between the yellow and red, which is pretty much where majority of, if not all our skin tones are. And this line is a skin tone line, right? So this is kind of, I wanna make sure that it's on that. So it's doing pretty good, right? Like we can, if we wanted to really make sure that it was finite, we could, but at least we can see that it's not too much on one side or too much on the other. So we're in a pretty good space. Um, so I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get rid of that mask. So if we wanted to, we can go in and we can just, just by looking at it, I can kind of tell if I wanted to, I can kind of change. It looks pretty green. So if I wanted to use some magenta, I can and things like that. But what I like to do first before we do that is I like to go into curves. So I don't necessarily mess with my RGB curves. I go down to my Hue versus Luma. That's the first thing that I like to talk about um, that a lot of people don't necessarily talk about too much is the Luma, which is great. It affects your lightness and darkness of a color. So I want to play with my skin tones. So the goal would then to be go to that red. Again, we're between red and yellow and play with what's in the middle of that. So if I go up, as you can see, it's affecting my skin. If I go down, I'm super chocolate. And so I like to be really subtle with it and just bring down those highlights within my skin to keep that brown consistency, right? So that's just a little small thing I like to do. And because I did use a LUT and that LUT does have a teal and orange, you know, foundation, I do like to play around and make sure that I'm not just doing a standard typical teal and orange. So I usually like to go between green and blue and kind of change the blue to where it's not teal. So I'll go down just a little. Again, everything is very subtle, very. And then the saturation, I pretty much don't play with. Now, if you feel like this is still a little too much, you can play around with your saturation. I did add a little bit here. So I wanted to go down, I could do that as well, but I kind of like having that saturation. So then I'm gonna go to like 120. So I feel like that is pretty much off to like a really, really good start. Um, we got our effects control. So here's the before and here's the after. And this is pretty much what you see when you're on my YouTube, right? So let's go to full. That looks really, really good to me. Again, we can do with adding some magenta and we can probably do with taking away, I'm going more towards the cooler side for the temperature. So now this is the before and this is the after. So this is pretty much what I would do. Um, and if you wanted to change it, you could play around with your midtones, but I think that mine was pretty much good. So I'm gonna leave it at that. So this is kind of how it is. And this is the before and after, right? So as you can see, it wasn't too much. Again, it's just really playing with that Rec 709, figuring out a creative LUT or not doing a creative LUT. And which is cool because you don't always have to add a creative LUT. You can just add that basic foundation of the Rec 709 and then go into your basic correction or your curves and play with your RGB curves. Um, so another thing I do want to show is the client work because it's a very similar workflow, but we don't use a creative look, which is really cool and the opposite of what I do for my YouTube. So now we're going to go into, you know, this is Issa and we can already see before we even add the Rec 709 that it has a lot of vibrancy in the colors behind her, right? And if we actually double clicked on it and we went to Lemetri Scope, we can see it, it's not too bad of a start off. We wanted to get to, let's see. I'm gonna show you guys how it looked after I did all the coloring. And then we're gonna try to make it back to that. So, this is pretty much how it looks after the coloring. Very vibrant, very beautiful. Skin tones look great to me. Again, very subjective, but the before and after is a clear cut difference, right? That is the goal that we're going to try to go for right now with that same workflow that I just showed you. So this is what we're aiming for, that. You can see a little bit more of the magenta, of course. So that is subjective as well. We're at a 0.5 for the magenta, um, but we're gonna basically try to get to this. So let's see, let's see how we can do it. 
So go along with me on this one. Okay, so when it comes to Issa, we're actually not going to do a creative LUT. So this is cool because the first one we did a creative LUT, and now for this one, we're not going to. So I'm gonna show you how it works when you just add that Rec 709 LUT that we did in the YouTube video. So the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is we're going to go into input LUT, browse, and we're gonna add that Rec 709 LUT automatically. So boom. It already gives us a good foundation like we talked about if you want to play with your white balance automatically you have the option to do so I like to kind of sometimes hit the white balance selector and just let it find my white balance for me so you know technically the walls were a little more white so and then if you have like a color checker or anything like that that'll work as well but we didn't have that on set so I'm kind of looking at it just to kind of see what works for me and what doesn't. So the white balance selector kind of gave me a good foundation as well. So we already have a good before and after. Now it is, you know, playing around with the colors. Like I feel like I needed a little bit more warmth to it. Of course, it is a little more on the blue side. So we're gonna we're gonna fix all of that. So next we're going to I'm gonna go into my curves and I'm gonna immediately create my S curve. So I do my three dots and I play around with the shadow first and then my mids and as you can do you can go to Lumetri scopes I can pretty much tell by looking at it but if you can't and you kind of need you know your Lumetri scopes definitely use it as we can see the highlights are still pretty high so we need to bring down those uh, whites so I'll go in basic correction bring down those whites since they need to be brought down um, from 100. So we'll bring them down. Right. So now, you know, they're they're down to like 90 RE, which is okay, which is fine. So now this is what we're working with. Again, we have our before and after, and it's already off to a good start. We need it to be a little bit more warmth, and we need, you know, to just add a little bit more vibrancy in that. So Issa has very beautiful skin, and so we need to show that beautiful skin so the first thing I'm going to do again is go into my color wheels and match and I'm going to go and bring my highlights down and then I want to go into my mid-tones and I'm just going to bring it up a little because she is a little bit more you know on a beautiful brown side so brought those up just a tad so here we are, we're getting at a good place, right? So what I'm going to also do is play around, add a little bit of saturation. Let's try that 120. All right, perfect. Again, we're off to a really, really good start. If we need a little bit of shadow, we can add that too. We're gonna go into the effects control, opacity, and just pretty much kind of see like what we're looking at as far as skin tone, what needs to be fixed. So we're gonna do our circle again. Doesn't need to be anything big. Go into telemetry. And we're just gonna pretty much see what we're working with. So so we're working with good skin tones. It's in the, in the middle line. It's you know not too much saturation. We can boost that if we want, but we're actually pretty good. So I'm, I'm I feel I feel okay about that. So now it's just a matter of adding a little contrast, doing a little razzle dazzle. So again, you know, I like 25. Y'all already know how I like my 25. So contrast, I go 25. We already added 120 for the saturation. If you feel like this is still a little bit more on the green side, again, you can go into your curves. You can drop your blues, you know, kind of how you want. So this is bring up a lot more blue. This is kind of drop it down to more of the green sector. So you can either do your S curve for your blue and play around with the blue on the mid. And that, that is when it becomes a little more subjective because we already had the skin tones where we wanted to. So we could stop there. So I think that's pretty good. I added a tint of 12. I had it at 10. And then even with the temperature right now, it's at a negative 1.9. If you go two, you get a little bit more of the warm side. You can either go zero too, you know? So I think that looks really, really good from the beginning, which is the raw 
to this, it looks ideal. And again, we can go back to 10. You don't even need to do a lot when you're playing with these. Like from a 10 to 12, you can already see it's a little bit more magenta. So go in the middle, you know, like I start, you start to develop an eye of like what looks good. Um, and that looks really good to me. I can even boost up the highlights just a tad bit more. Um, just to kind of help with the background and things like that. But that looks really, really good to me. And this one, we didn't use a creative LUT. We literally just added that basic correction of the Rec 709. And then we went in and perfected everything else manually with just the basic correction, the curves, as well as, you know, the color wheels to match. So we're pretty much done. And if we wanted to take it a step further, you know, we can go into the Hue versus Luma, which I know is my favorite, but East already has good skin. So we don't need to need to bring it down if we don't want to. Um, let's see. Because it's pretty much already there. But if you did see like how those highlights are popping, you could still go into that Luma. Again, I like to do it because it's just that key thing that I feel like nobody talks about and it does help a lot. Even just the smallest movement makes everything look 10 times better. So now we have our before, then we have our after. A little before, then we have our after. So I pretty much, I like that. I think it, it, it looked just like this in person and it's gonna give us what we need. And I pretty much, this is the vibe. Same with the YouTube video. Like this is our before, this is our after. Now, before, the thing that I wanna talk about last is exporting because all of this is null and void if you don't export properly so we're going to get into exporting real quick so you go to export um media and the one thing that is very important is a lot of people talk about how when you export out of premiere the coloring changes it's a color shift you don't see the colors that you just spent all this time color you know coloring or nothing like that and so i use the qt gamma compensation which is the love that i found just on youtube when i was having issues and it is a game changer. However, the reason why earlier I told you, think about how much you're lowering your exposure because this does play a part in exporting. So this is pretty much kind of what we're working with as far as what we want it to be. This is how we want it to show on YouTube. And so if we export this without that QT gamma compensation LUT, it's gonna look washed out once it actually exports. But if we do add that QT gamma, as you can see, we go to it, we go to documents where all my LUTs are, QT Gamma Compensation. Once you hit open, boom. You see how it got darker? So before, it's lighter. You add it, it's darker. So you always have to make sure you don't bring your exposure down too much when you're coloring and keep this actual LUT in mind because you want it to export like this. You want it to be exactly perfect how you export. So you don't have to re-export. And then you do all of your export settings. But this is exactly what I want you all to see when you're watching my YouTube video. Same when it comes to Issa. So as we can see, we might have made it a little too dark because now when we export, she might come out a little darker. So what I like to do is just use that and say, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't need to play around with the shadows. Maybe I don't need to play around with the blacks. Bring both of those up. And then even with the curves, I don't think I went too low. Now when I export, and see what it gives me for Issa. And again, I know it sucks, but it's, it is what it is. So now when I add it, we're gonna go and select. And sometimes it doesn't export out too, too dark, but this is even still better than it being like, you know, colorless when I actually export. That kind of gives me that really, you know, moody, which is what they wanted, that moody tone with the, the color and everything. So just make sure you're being aware of the export. And I know sometimes it's washed out. So adding the QT gamma compensation is gonna be important, but essentially both of these look really, really good and exactly how I want them. And that's pretty much it. So I know that everybody's workflow is different. There's no right or wrong to coloring. There are certain things that you just learn, of course, but there's no right or wrong process. You could decide to mess with your curves first, or you could decide to mess with your curves last. But at the end of the day, it's about what works for you and accomplishing the look and the color that you would like that looks professional, that gives the exact mood and tone that you want your video to give. That's really all it's about and so hopefully you guys learned a little bit about my process and i hope in turn it works for you so hopefully y'all like this video if you did give it a thumbs up 
definitely share with some of your friends. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I will answer them as best as I can. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.